Hello and welcome to episode 38 of Saab Fever. My name's Frank and in today's episode I have another product review for you. Uh, once again, it's those Swedes at Saab 3D Print. Uh, not content with making awesome cup holders or USB chargers, they've now turned their attention towards aftermarket radio antennas. Uh, this one in particular is quite special to me. I've always, always been a fan of the Draken. Uh, I don't really know why. It probably comes from uh, childhood when I used to uh, make model airplanes. Uh, I have one here. As you can see, it's a little larger than the model I have, but everything seems to be there. If you'll forgive me for just a moment to um, take a trip down memory lane, the Draken's always been... Um, one of my favourite aircraft, really. Um, as a child making model airplanes, I'm used to something more akin to this. This obviously isn't one I've made. I've stolen this as a toy. I've stolen from my son. Um, you were used to seeing, uh, obviously, wings. I mean, obviously, this is a tornado, so there's a swept wing. But you were used to seeing wings at the front, wings at the back, tail. Uh, usually two engines as well. If you think about things, obviously, like the tornado here, the... Um, the F-14 Tomcat, the F-15 Eagle, uh, even the what the, it's the, the F-16 Falcon, isn't it? The F-A-18 Hornet. Um, they all follow that same basic principle. Two engines, wings at the front, wings at the back, and a tail. One day, after visiting the local model shop, I got this. And I have to say, I don't think even back then I even knew Saab made, um, made cars. But this is just so different. I mean, it's single engine. It's got massive wings. They're at the back. Obviously, I now know it's a, a Delta. It's a double Delta, I believe. Um, but this was just so weird. You know, it's just like something out of sci-fi in comparison to what I was used to seeing. Um, so when the guys... I, f I first saw a post on Facebook and... What they actually showed was a Gripen. Uh, that's what Saab are basically famous for at the moment. This is Saab's main fighter, only fighter, I believe. That's a Gripen. And I think someone asked them uh, if they do a Vigan, and someone asked them that. And I thought, oh, do you know what? Let's ask them if they do a Draken. And it turns out they did. And here it is. Um, first impressions are. Um, it's fantastic to be honest um, obviously it's not painted it's it's black like this but personally I'll be leaving this as entirely black uh, the reason being although it would be nice to see a properly you know properly painted up fighter like that kind of thing um, the truth of the matter is it's still the car's antenna well it's not but well, that's a, that's a point for another day. Um, it's still the sort of the shark fin, which I personally I expect to be black. So I'm going to be leaving it black. Um, the guys have suggested that you could prime it and paint it. Um, I could. I'm not going to. I'm going to throw it straight on the car and see how it goes. To be honest, um, which of course brings me to my next point: which car do I put it on? Now, I could put it on the estate. I could put it on the saloon, but I figured, what's the point of any of that? Because when I'm in the car, I'm basically pretty much one of the only people in the world that won't see it. So it's, it's to personally, from, from my point of view, it's like, what's the point of that? Um, it's going to be up there on the roof of the estate or something, and I'm not going to see it. I'll see it every time I walk away from the car and turn back to look, sure. But I won't actually get to enjoy it. So, I then came up with the idea, as it happens, my convertible Zanhenna is in desperate need of replacement, so that's perfect for me. Now, the way the guys have designed this, um, this is what you will receive when you buy it, and what they've done, rather than try to make their own base and everything, what they've actually done is they've designed this to go on the bottom plate of the dummy antenna. So if you have a dummy antenna already, you take that off the car, take it apart, use the base, screw the base on here, and then screw this to the car. Perfect. I don't have a dummy antenna. 
Now what I do have is the antenna on the car, so I'm going to have a go, going to take it off and see if I can actually make any use of it. If not, I'm going to have to buy um, a dummy antenna and take it apart. Um, so, without further ado, let's get out to the car. Luckily for me, the convertible just so happens to be the easiest uh, car to remove the antenna from. We just need to open the boot, pop some of the pop rivets out, remove the handle, and then we can see the bolt that we need to undo. With the bolt undone, the old antenna should pretty much just pop out. I see I need to give that a good clean before I put the Draken back on in its place. Okay, right. That didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped. Um... It would appear that when the Saab 3D print guys say this is designed to go on the base of a dummy antenna, um, they actually seem to mean that. Uh, I was hopeful. Well, obviously, this is uh, the car doesn't have uh, navigation, so this will purely be the telephone antenna. Um, it looks like that sent. Oh, can I wedge that there? Yes, I can. It looks like that central one there is going to go fine, but I appear to need two holes, one here and one here. So, let's take this apart and see if we can take off anything on the inside that we don't need and then get some holes drilled because I'm really hoping I don't actually have to go and buy a dummy antenna. Isn't it? A little nubbin here sticking up. I've just got one there that's semi corroded away as well. Yeah, this isn't going to be an ideal fit, is it? See, that actually looks, that is lining up. Was that screw hole there perfectly? So really, I just need to make two holes, one here, one here, in the right place. Oh, be fan be golden, in fact, why am I golden? Um, right, let's get the Dremel. There's that, yep, yeah, there. Let's get the Dremel out and get those two nubbins off. See how we go from there. Safety glasses time. Ow, that was getting very hot. Ooh, would you look at that? Right. right, 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 I think we have a very good fit there, actually. I think we have an exceedingly good fit. Um, that screw hole there is lining up perfectly. Now, how do I go about getting those other screw holes lined up? I don't know. Could just take a wild stab in the dark, couldn't I? Let's find a pen. Let's find a pen. Right, I've got the next best thing, a pencil. So, that goes there. I reckon... God, this, this isn't going to go well, is it? This is not going to go well. Out there. 
No. Wait, maybe. Yes, I do agree with myself. And... About there. Pretty sure the other are sides the same. So, if that's gone well, then surely I can just do this one by eye. Hush. <laughs> There's any number of people watching this cringing right now, but ah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. And I need to make the hole that big. Right. Cool. Um, it's probably best if I do that off camera, lest I um, embarrass myself further. Oh, look at that. That looks like it's coming out right on that ridge that sits up. Fantastic, isn't that wonderful? Right, I'll be back in a minute. Well, I'm glad I didn't film that. Um, in quite a shocking turn, actually, my apparently my ability to mark where the um, holes should be drilled was pretty much spot on. However, in a surprise, it should come to basically no one my ability to drill through those markings I've made was quite lacking. Um, on the plus side, um, I assume this is aluminium. I mean, it's it's light and it seems to be a very soft metal, so the drill bits didn't really have any problem whatsoever going through them. So, now, now then, now then, now then, I need to find some screws. See, unfortunately, as the guys Sub 3D print would probably be screaming at their monitors right now. That's far too small. Um, because they designed it around the dummy antenna, I'm assuming that we would just use the screws that come with the dummy antenna to go in here. Since I'm not using a dummy antenna, that means I need to find something else suitable. I do have a box of things here, which includes screws. The problem is, is the head of this going to stick up too much and scratch the paintwork? I have a screw, I have a screw, people. Uh, now, I imagine some of you are probably saying to yourself, yes, but Frank, but what screw is that? I don't know, is the answer. Um, I simply know these, and some of you will probably notice them. Those are the screws you use to screw in um, CD-ROM drives. SD, uh, SSD drives, sorry, and floppy drives into a computer case. Oh, oh, and that only just reaches. Ah. See if I can no. I can't even get them to bite. Okay. Uh, so the thickness. And, oops. The thickness of the screw and the um, thread pitch is correct, but I need them to be longer. I need them to be longer. And no. Well, that took a lot more effort than it really should. Um, I was, in the end, able to find some screws that are ever so slightly longer, and they had slightly smaller heads, which made I means I didn't entirely waste my time trying to countersink them slightly. Um, however, having been through all of this, 
I mean, yes, that's fine. It's done. I'm sure it'll work. I really cannot recommend that you go through this. Um, yeah. How, what way does that go? I probably shouldn't have taken that off, should I? Um, oh, wait, oh, I see. It goes that way. Nope. goes that way. The only way it can possibly go on. Um, yeah, anyway, as I was saying, um, I can't recommend that you go through what I've been through to try to get this to work. There is a chance that those screws are going to scratch my paint. Uh, I mean, it'll be underneath here, so you won't see it. Um, I might just put a blob of grease on each one, just so that if it does, the grease will be there already, so that the water doesn't instantly get in and start uh, rusting out the top of the, the top of the boot. So... Right, I think back to the car for fitting. We'll see how well this goes. Yeah. See you in a sec. Popping it back into place is just as easy as removing the old one. There is a slight alignment issue. It was probably always there in the car, but no one ever really cared before. But now that there's a Draken on the back, it matters deeply to me that it actually points forward properly. Every time I screw it in a bit more, it's sadly it kind of turns to the left. I'm having to straighten it up again. Eventually I realise I can just reach around from the side, hold the plane in place while I tighten it up. One final check to make sure it's not rotating around or moving. Inspect my work. Now you can see here the base is not quite sitting quite right. I suspect the convertible's boot is a little more um, sloping than perhaps the guys intended for it to be on. I imagine on the estate, for instance, it would be pretty much level. And here's one of the main reasons it's on the convertible. With the roof down, I'll be followed by a draken all the way home. One thing I didn't quite consider when I first thought up this plan was um, how well it's going to work with the roof going up and down. It just so happens we're lucky. It looks like the lining on the Tornio cover there just about touches the tail fin of the Draken, but um, thankfully it's not. I mean, it's it's not the metal isn't touching it or anything, so I don't think there'll be any damage there. And here come the obligatory beauty shots. As always, thanks for watching.